Winehabbers, my name is Jesse Meekum from Winehab. It stands for You Need a Budget. Yes, you do. This is another Whiteboard Wednesday. We are continuing our series talking about how to invest like a pro based on my 99 cent book, Worth More Than, more than the Price. That is on Amazon that I wrote a few years ago. We've made this into a video series. I hope you've been sticking along with us. Today I want to talk about the principles involved in how to win when you do the investing thing. Uh, on average, people in the market tend to buy high and sell low. If you look at uh, just mutual fund performance and you'll see a fund and you'll say, oh man, this fund has uh, generated a rate of return of 10%, right? Then you look at the average investor of that fund and they have performed under the 10%. Why? Because they got into the fund too late when it was already at its peak or close. And then they also uh, sold when it was too low. They were buying high and selling low. We want to buy low and sell high. We'll talk just briefly about that. It assumes a bull market, but I want to talk about principles that are within your control. And I'm going to start with the last principle. We focus only when we want to win with investing. We focus only on what we can control. It's like that Covey idea in Seven Habits. You have your circle of influence. Well, in this, we're talking about your circle of control. You only can manipulate and change what you actually can control. Everything else, you just got to kind of let be, not think about it, not maybe dive into the news. You can't control those types of things. So you just focus on those things that you can control. And I will devote an entire video to it next time. But here in your power are things that you most certainly can control. One is autopilot. When you're investing, they call it dollar cost averaging. It just means you continually invest the same amount, same dollar amount, over and over and over again. And as the market climbs, you're buying and it's increasing in value. And then the market dips and you're still buying. So when it dips, you're buying low. When it's high, you're capturing those gains. Now, granted, if you were to do that and the market declines for 10 years and you're buying during the whole decline, that does not work for you. So when people say, oh, dollar cost averaging is a way to guarantee that you buy low and sell high. That is not true. You only would be buying low and selling high in the event that the market over whatever time frame you're looking is actually moving up. So just be aware of that. But the idea is you put it on autopilot and then you don't really think about it because you can't control the investment performance beyond a few more of these attributes. Moving from the bottom up, to learn about allocation and diversica diversification. Allocation is a fancy word for where are you invested? Are you invested in real estate? Are you invested in bonds? We'll talk about those. Stocks, we'll talk about those. Different vehicles for hold uh, um, of holding stocks. And then how are those stocks actually held in your various accounts, right? So we'll get into all of that. But when you think about allocation, you think about different asset classes. And you might say, we're invested in real estate, we're invested in bonds, well, what kind of bonds? And you can get really, really fancy with this. I just want you to understand the principle, and fancy is not necessarily good, I should say. Understand the principle that you diversify, diversify across various asset classes so that if one underperforms, say you were in energy for the last little while, and at the time I'm recording this, you would have seen kind of a big dip in energy prices, so energy stocks would have been hurt. Well, at the same time, maybe, I don't even know because I don't follow it really well, uh, cocoa is way up and you were invested some in cocoa and so that's climbing while this one's declining. There are all sorts of papers and good, good data and research around being able to diversify where not all your eggs are in one basket and you're invested in various asset classes, you're allocated into various asset classes and it lowers your risk of losing your principal, losing the amount you've originally invested while increasing or at least maintaining the potential reward or return. And we talked about the rate of return and how that drives growth of your investment over the long haul. So if you can, if I could tell you, and this is a little bit of a have your cake, eat it too scenario, where I can say, no, no, we're going to lower your risk of losing your principal while maintaining or increasing the um, rate of return that you are likely to get. And you would say, well, yeah, that sounds like a slam dunk. Well, that is diversification, properly allocating your investments across various asset classes. Luckily, it's super easy and as easy as it's ever been in the history of the world. And you can just set that all up on autopilot. You don't have to be, uh, you know, spending your weekends worrying about your asset allocation. It's maybe a couple of year a couple hours per year kind of endeavor to make sure everything's balanced. 
talked a little bit about risk and reward. It's just the idea that as you risk more, the reward is greater. If you've ever been to Vegas and you've gambled a little bit, you would have seen this principle in action. I like your odds far better uh, investing this way than I do at Vegas. But um, the idea is as you risk more, the reward is potentially greater and that your tolerance for risk may be lower as you get older and you uh, care more about the preservation of your principal, of your nest egg, than you do about the potential greater reward. So as normally, as your age increases, your tolerance for risk decreases and you end up allocating or diversifying in a way that lowers your risk, maintains more principal while still earning a decent uh, risk, uh, return. Finally, your investing should be boring. You should not be the talk of parties. You can listen to those conversations because they're stimulating, they're, uh, they're funny, they're quite entertaining, but they are not something that you would actually do. So when someone says, hey, what do you think the market will do? You'll say, I don't know, I think it'll go either up or down. I'm pretty sure one of those two. Might, might stay flat, actually. And they'll kind of be like, well, that wasn't that fun. Well, what do you, you think is kind of a hot sector right now? You know, I think I'm kind of invested in all the sectors because uh, some of them probably could go up. Some of them might go down. Some of them might be flat. And that conversation won't last very long because you are being boring in this party situation. And that is exactly how we want your investing to be. When someone says, hey, Jesse, what do you invest in? I say, I invest in the stock market. And uh, the end. So finally, as it relates to how to win, you start now. We've talked about this quite a bit. Have you started now? Um, have you looked and started to kind of educate yourself to make sure you're comfortable starting now? Only invest once you can understand what you're investing in. But once you do, start now. We talked about that person that started at the age of 30 versus 50 and how they stopped at 50 and the 50 year old tried to catch up and never made it, that kind of thing. So start now. Recap, what you can control as it relates to winning an investment. We'll go into little knobs you can turn in the actual control bit next week. Start now, keep your investing boring and totally understandable by you. Understand the principle of more risk and more reward, less risk, less reward. Allocate and uh, with your allocation, make sure it's diversified, that you're not putting all your eggs into one basket. Oh, real estate's gonna keep going up and I'm just gonna invest everything. Don't do that. Don't, don't be one of those people that lose everything because you have a dip for a while. Finally, set it up on autopilot to the extent you can. And the options available to us now, as far as autopilot go, are as great as they've ever been. So that's an easy one to do. Again, next week we'll cover, cover control, but these principles here, well understood, will help you outperform your peers at that party and you won't even have to be the life of the party. You'll just kind of secretly be sitting there saying, yep, I think I'm doing better because I'm not really doing anything. And that is the ticket, it seems, with investing the way we want to do it, where we don't want to become professionals. We just want to generate uh, great returns at a risk tolerance that is appropriate for us. And uh, yeah, not have to spend our uh, evenings and weekends pouring over financial perspectives or things like that. I will see you guys next week where we will talk about control and specifically those knobs you can kind of move to make sure we're only focusing on the things we can control and kind of forgetting the rest so that we can sleep well at night and do really well in the investing game. I will see you next week as we continue this little series. Thanks.